is. Uh, but coach, uh, he raised a, a really big point and a really valid point they raised there about uh, the Cubs not being able to convert their chances and, and score the goals. And now they're coming up against teams uh, that if you look at the kind of preparation and planning they have in them, it's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a hard one, but uh, when you are looking, uh, I remember, and I will tell you now, this under-17, for example, Tanzania, I remember five uh, years back when uh, still previous president of the Federation, that one that went to prison, uh, what uh, I, uh, is now not on my mind, uh, Tanzania Football Federation, they have started five years before with uh, Uganda. Uh, Uganda has gone with steps of seven miles, providing the league and everything is there, but Locally, you are not having a proper impression because you have inside competition. You are not competing with others outside. And tournament in Turkey uh, has shown exactly that. Um, strengthening the technical bench, uh, working very hard. Still, there is so much to be job to be done from that point, from, from point of Uganda. On the other side, you look at other countries. I just mentioned here about Morocco because as, as a servant and soldier of the game in Africa, I really follow even those under 17 because this is a passion. I'm coming from the country that is fourth in the world in produ producing young players uh, after Brazil, Argentina and France. And I can tell you that um, need to start, you need to start earlier. You need to uh, put them in international competition because this is how you get mileage in the legs. This is how you grow and this is how you really move with steps of seven miles into the bright future from, the, from that point, grooming the players for the next generation for under 20. M maybe to put uh, this question clearly to address uh, Mitchell, we are lucky we are having a coach, I mean yeah. national team coach, top club coach. So you are in charge of under 17, you've lost 1-0 to Angola, you are facing Tanzania on Wednesday, home who team. lost home team, they scored three goals, rather uh, four, four goals, goals, but lost and they're the home team, and we all know what playing at home means in Tanzania. What do you tell the boys? Uh, those boys are hypersensitive. It's first big competition for them. And they, uh, you know, uh, you really need to relax them, to refocus them on the ingredients that are making performance, to not tell them, we must win, we must win. With we must win, legs will get locked. Yeah. We need to unlock their legs. We need to find a solution. Uh, for their age to put yourself down to their age to tell them making aware that uh, millions of Ugandans are behind them there is no any pressure just show mm -hmm. that you are representing the country in the best possible way mm -hmm. and I have no doubts uh, once uh, mentally you are switching them from losing first match because now for them it's very hard uh, to come back but uh, coming back, as I told, in intention need to be to inject them mentally so that uh, instead of feeling pressure of must winning, mm -hmm. feel pressure of must playing and enjoying their game. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I, I think uh, yeah. that, that, that aspect actually of, 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 of the youngsters enjoying, it's something that, that the coach, the Ghanaian coach, Kwesi Fabian, has actually been drumming up, talking about let these boys learn how to express themselves. The problem is, and, and, and for me, looking from outside, looking in, is uh, that, that the, the, the quality of coaches that we have, certainly the ones now who are at, uh, at, at the disposal of, of, of these youngsters, uh, the tactics and the philosophies that they bring, they are more result-driven than uh, actually letting them express themselves. And uh, that, that I... I inhibits the players in a way because what you're going to have right now is is a player who is not going to go on that pitch to express himself he's going to be holding back what we saw in in, in the game between tanzania and and, um, and and nigeria was was that you have people who are playing with uh, reckless abandon yeah, yeah? yeah. They, are, they, are, they, they are just enjoying it yeah. but we do not tend to see that in uganda i've, I've been to a few post-primary tournaments and uh, what so you hear yes the coach is saying clear clear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just telling the guys, clear the danger, not yeah. play your way yeah. out of something. And I, I, I believe that shows on, on, uh, on, on, on some of our players, if not most of yes. them. And uh, actually, you're talking of the FIFA Juniors League. Uh, 
the coaches who are, and as, as having this discussion with, with the, the publicist of FUFA, Ahmed Hussein, I asked him, what are the qualifications that you have? Because I know with the top flight league, you have, um, you, you've set a minimum of uh, CAF B. But what minimum have you set for people who are handling these kids in the FUFA Juniors League? Because we tend again to water down that minimum, not knowing that it's very important at that age for them to learn the basics. And so you need a quality coach to handle them at that age because they need to appreciate some of these basics. I have a very simple uh, answer to this. Uh, you know, when I remember when we had only 28 licensed coaches, uh, FUFA has gone with support of CAF and FIFA in a hyper production of uh, the licenses. Coaches have really improved and I need to give credit to my colleagues. Yes. They're working very hard in that regard. Yes. I will tell you how we have done in my country, in mm. Serbia. I, in Serbia, uh, you are having that licensing, but you are having licensing for the senior, where you are competitor, mm. and you have licensing for the youth categories where you are educator. Mm. You cannot, for example, I have been far away, but I feel for my colleague, uh, coach Sebastian mm. that uh, want to bring the style of play here mm. and style of play has a domino effect mm. domino effect that if you early start mm. this story about clearing yeah. Yeah. Uh, you eradicate but by allowing players mm. expressing in that age in post primaries in Coca-Cola and mm. wherever I have been here and is all about domino effect of two things mm. one is the way they are coached and result driven or, and orientated and mm. pressed mm. coaches that are doing that and also the fields that are not allowing playing from behind mm. and allowing uh, Barcelona mm. style to come to start from there. Mm. Um, we have done that in a way um, that youth categories are differently licensed and differently licensed seniors. I, in youth categories uh, there is exactly what a certain age player need to go through. Uh, for example, I will go to one simple thing that I will tell you. I have watched the game and I have seen, for example, just look at, I think, two uh, second or third goal mm. of Nigeria, mm. when the player received the ball under the angle. I have not seen this with Ugandan players. Mm. Why? Mm. Why? Uh, because the other ones have gone and they have taught them the angles of receiving. With our players, mm. you are having uh, luck of putting them mm. in right sh shape for passing. I see our players pushing the ball, not passing. I have seen when they go for heading, there is no shape mm. for the heading. But this, you need to have a program that need to go back to the grassroots mm. to a, a, a Steps of seven miles have been done, and really, I appreciate that. Mm. But uh, if you really want, mm. this is the most footballing country in East Africa and top five on African continent, mm. need to be done that. And uh, I have the highest degree of respect to my fellow coaches mm. here. I, I'm also product of Ugandan football coaching school coming in uh, 2001 mm. here, and, and I'm one of them. Mm. And I believe that uh, that problem that you have recognized mm. could be separated. Youth coaches need to be uh, educated in different way mm. to educate and prepare for competition. Mm. Then seniors, let them compete after. Mm. Uh, uh, coach, uh, Pak uh, our under-17 and under-20 coach uh, currently uh, in charge of the team in Tanzania. Uh, you must have been, you must, uh, you should be friends. Uh, uh, you must know, know him yes. uh, quite, I mean, he's, he's a fellow soldier like you in, in yes, African yes, football. Yes. Uh, just tell us, uh, how much do you think his experience will impact us? Uh, I have no doubts in his qualities, mm. in his experience and his uh, reference behind being on the World Cup, being from mm. Ghana that has uh, been uh, permanent appearance on the World Cup. Mm. I have no doubt, but I only fear about the timing that he has been given because magic mm. stick does not exist. Mm. He will do his best, mm. how far it will reach. I just fear that time mm. prior to the competition, this is the only that I have question. Mm. 
Okay, coach, we, we're going to move on from the, the under-17 because I want us to talk about the Africa Cup of Nations mm -hmm. and uh, concentrate on a few groups uh, that we have here. We know... We were with you. We in, can in we Gabon. can concentrate on all of them because yeah. out of uh, out of twenty yeah, yeah. out of twenty four teams, I have insiders in twenty one team. Mm. Here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you actually wrote and, wrote a piece for for, I the, you call them, yes. for the sun <laughs> sandals for goalposts. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 We we let's just, let's just look at the group that Uganda is in. Mm. Yes, Egypt, DR Congo, Uganda. And Zimbabwe. Yes. I'm just going to ask a very simple question. Group yeah. Do you think we'll get out of this group? Uh, having in mind that this is second appearance because we wanted to qualify. We qualified mm. uh, first time. We gain experience, and based on that experience and being very close to go to the World Cup, mm. this need to be a platform on which we need to and convincing qualifying one match to go mm. to the Africa Cup of Nations, this needs to be confidence. Mm. When you look at DRC Congo that has been in second pot, that needed to beat Liberia, and lucky that Lafour didn't play, and otherwise anything could happen, you have seen. Mm. If it was not that Cedric Bakambu goal, uh, they would not qualify. Mm. And you have Zimbabwe that needed uh, last match to win against Congo uh, Brazzaville. Mm. Uh, you are asking yourself why to not have respect to the opponents, but not over-respect. Much more have self-respect to yourself, how you have grown several prior to us qualifying 2017 near misses, qualifying 2017, 2018 marvelous World Cup qualifiers, is meaning uh, confidence needs to be inside. Let us forget this last match in Tanzania that mm. had not a competitive <laughs> age and whatever. Uh, let this serve as a wake-up call. I have no doubt that uh, all you, of you stakeholders supporting FUFA, leading from the management point of aspect, coach and his technical team preparing properly and players that Uganda has, mm. Uganda need to have self-respect and go to the competition with target to go out of this group. Uh, coach, uh, reading your co column uh, for, for Sanders for, for goal posts, for posts, is it? <laughs> I, I, I keep forgetting. Uh, remember, it, it, it was obviously an absorbing read, but you highlighted an issue that actually I'd, I'd also highlighted because it came out on Sunday and I'd written about it in my Sunday column. Uh, the issue that vexes us Ugandans is that we cannot score. We do not seem to have, you know, that ability to score many goals. And the last time uh, we're in Gabon uh, with you actually we, we just managed to, to score the single goal in, in, in three matches against Mali, which, yeah. against Mali which does not cut it and you quite rightly you know pointed in your column that that this could be something that holds back Uganda because we seem not to be proactive in that sense yeah we can limit uh, teams from, from scoring as we did brilliantly against Egypt and were unfortunate to concede that last minute goal. But when it comes for that person now to convert, to, to, the, goals. To convert the goals, yeah, it's a problem. And uh, immediately after this draw has held, I, I, I gave people a snapshot of, uh, of the group through the lens of the strikers, yeah. you know, talking yeah. about Uganda, who is going to lead that line. You're, you're looking at uh, Patrick Kadu. Uh, DRC, you're looking at Cedric Bakambu, mm -hmm. uh, Kama Biliat in, uh, for, for Zimbabwe, and, and, uh, and Mohamed Salah. Salah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is uh, uh, goal is their middle name. Perhaps Why you need to substitute Kadu uh, or Emma Okui. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, looking and putting on scan all uh, three uh, teams' opponents. You need to know that is. Uh, totally different mindset of the game will be with Egypt. This is not the Egypt of Hector Cooper that you can easily mm. analyze. You know where the players are standing easily. is is mm. much easier to close them when they play with Hector Cooper. Mm. Now, mm. with Javier Aguirre, with all the experience from Mexico, from Japan, mm. from wherever he has, Spain, where he has coached mm. in Espanol and whatever he has come, and he has allowed the flavor, uh, 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 especially upfront mm. expression. And when you have that in mind, uh, it, is, it will be much harder to defend them this time. And the best way of defending them is courageously coming out and looking to attack because Arabs have one big problem against the teams from Sub-Saharan Africa. Their way of dancing 
is not the way sub-Saharan black Africa has. Mm. Theref therefore, they have big problem with race coordination. Mm. So their defenders are always in a way uh, much faster in thinking than in moving and turning and whatever. So those heavy trucks are exactly chance where Uganda could get a chance because uh, with all due respect to, to everything, there is no perfect team. Mm. Egypt has extreme strength playing at home, uh, having attacking force, having weaknesses behind, uh, having pressure of the, of the home crowd that will be enormous. It, uh, you remember 2006, 8 and 10, uh, or 2006 especially when it was Mido and, and Hassan Shekhata having that conflict and penalties decided against Senegal and whatever. is meaning it will not be easy walking in the park for them. But Uganda need to be finish a job before because if you are looking last match against Egypt as your yeah. chance, you are in problem. Yeah, exactly. You have DRC with Florani Benge and Mihail, uh, coach of Tipi Mazembe and Ayes Vita that, that are having a group of players that are uh, having top balance. Balance yeah. of the players that are playing in African inter-club competitions for Tipi Mazembe and Ayes Vita. Yeah. And players that are playing in big European cl clubs, plus Sedik Bakambu, the, the highest uh, paid African player mm. playing in China. Mm. And uh, also there, they have strength uh, in attack and they have huge problems defensively. Mm. So, uh, and perfect balance between iron defending and looking and exposing those weaknesses is the chance. With uh, um, Zimbabwe, I would tell because I have players inside. You know, uh, when they play against Congo Brazzaville, I have done uh, for them scouting because for them, uh, their coach, Sande Zamba is just coming and tell them, guys, play. <laughs> and then is all rely on Knowledge Musona, or Sike, on Tino, on, yeah. on, on Kama, yeah. and, and these people supporting. So even them, they have their uh, uh, weaknesses in a way. All three teams are attacking orientated now. With closing them, uh, uh, their attacking strengths, because uh, points of their strengths lie in attacking uh, force. Once you close that, you need to find the sources of vulnerability that is in their defense. And, and perfect balance, playing against one team from Kosafa in preparation, playing against Central African team, and playing against uh, one Arab team, will give a perfect preparation for the team. And uh, you know, no you can take from Uganda whatever you want. You can tell we have no attacking force and whatever, but uh, you cannot take hope and something what other teams have no. I know I'm witness as now I'm supporter, I'm neutral. I can tell you no players on the African continent love their country the way Uganda's love. There is only one condition. Do not allow them to think about anything else. Provide all the conditions. Let them not think about bonuses, allowances, anything. Let them just think about football and to not have excuse. Ugandans will die a little for the country and get good results. All right, coach, I have, uh, I think he couldn't afford to miss it and he didn't want to miss the show. He didn't want to miss talking to you. Mm. I have Andrew on speaker. Andrew? Andrew, can you hear me? <laughs> Hello, Andrew? Can you hear me? I've put you on speaker so you can speak to coach. Yes, it's my pleasure, coach. Good evening and welcome back to Uganda. Uh, he's saying welcome back to Uganda. Thank you very much. You are telling me Kuli Kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Kuli Kayo, so, uh, you know, I have a specific question for the coach. Yes, I'm listening. Uh, and my, my specific question is, uh, in, in, in the Uganda Crane team, uh, if you look at our form, in Gabon, you look at how there, the kind of team, the kind of setup you had put out there, uh, you at the team now. Um, uh, uh, have we improved? Are we looking better? Do we have better chances at an Africa Cup of Nations? Or do you think the retirement of people like Joffrey Massa, people like, of course, uh, and the West yeah. Coast also have not gone there? Have gone. Where, where do you get to Uganda now with slightly more experience from the Apple compared to the last Apple? How good are we? Uh, always team that has played on big competition, Uganda played on big competition in Gabon and had once more, I'm repeating, world, top World Cup qualifiers, being second, separating Egypt and Ghana is not an easy, having in mind that Egypt was on World Cup 2006, eight, uh, 10 and 14. 
uh, is a platform where Uganda need to build uh, confidence going into the next competition. Uh, you know, it is unfair to compare because most of the players that are playing uh, just they gain experience during that time and now uh, they are having enough experience. They know what it takes being on the big competition. There is not any more and match fever. And you remember how we gave away penalty because uh, uh, Samoa Jan told me uh, regarding that personally. Two times he has allowed uh, uh, Isaac to receive the ball. Third time, uh, third time he went for, and it was more on their experience of the big competition than uh, football itself. Yeah. So uh, fully aware and having that experience, this is a perfect platform that Uganda need to use going forward. When I compare the teams, every team has its uh, sti still backbone is there with Dennis, with Hassan, with Khalid, uh, uh, with uh, Emmanuel uh, and others. I'm sorry if I uh, miss anyone. Uh, and those ones, they need to be role models and positive example to lead others and to not allow in when the tough gets going, going gets tough, uh, that they really know how under the pressure to behave and how uh, others that are coming, that coach is selecting to play, are um, in a way uh, helping them to come and help them to perform better than we perform in Gabon. Okay, fantastic. Andrew, you've heard that, right? Yes, I've heard the answer. Okay, enjoy Mbezi Beach, as you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Really. Fantastic. Oh, so, yeah. Coach, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, my producer is telling me we're running out of time in this uh, second segment, but I just wanted to go through uh, Group C. I'll jump Group B in a bit because uh, Group C has the interest of, of even, East even Africa. The second group uh, has something very interesting. Nigeria, Guinea, uh, Madagascar, Burundi. People think this is a punching bag group, but mm. Madagascar government and Burundi government has done everything. Four to five players they will add to the team and it will and be it totally changes. different than this what has been in qualifiers. Mm. So uh, we shall have a thrilling competitive outcome. Continue to see. Group, yeah, well, uh, group C has Senegal, Algeria, Kenya and Tanzania. Two East African teams in that one. Our brothers will fight for the, for, for the third place. It's hard to see that Algeria with Belmadi and, and uh, Senegal with Aliou Sisse that have an established and just missing uh, because our player did not had concentration. If you remember, uh, Idrissa Ganagé uh, was not covering that yes. uh, near post yeah. against Japan, Japan on the World Cup. Otherwise, Senegal would be pride of Africa in that competition. They played very well. So, based on that experience, we, they will go as a favorite in this Group C, and I see them going through. Who, who are favorites in Group D, which has Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, and Namibia? And this is this Group D is after Group A with Egypt, uh, DRC, Congo, Uganda, and Zimbabwe, the strongest group because having Morocco, Ivory Coast, uh, South Africa, Namibia is there. Yeah. Let us call it uh, underdogs. <laughs> Uh, but uh, three uh, teams, Morocco with Hervrenar, uh, Ivory Coast, Rejuvenated, and finally trying from top quality individuals to play as a team. Uh, and South Africa that has so many things to say. And uh, my second team after Uganda is, of course, South Africa because I have players inside and I have been before playing this match in Tunisia against Libya, this easy match, I have advised the coach, I got these certain things in playing away match and I'm happy that they have qualified. So uh, very hard. Uh, I think all three teams uh, will here qualify from this group. Okay. Uh, group E, which is also a tricky one, by yes. the way, Tunisia, Mali, Mauritania, Angola. Someone would say Mauritania and Angola are underdogs, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, uh, Mauritania is a team of the year, CAF yes. team of the year 2018, mm -hmm. and Angola that has a coach from my country, uh, Vasiljevic, uh, that has, after many years, bounced back, uh, could uh, make a problem, but uh, competitiveness of Tunisia under uh, Alain Gires and Mali, that has over 500 players across Europe playing and yeah. has such a pool of players. And when you look like last time playing against us, 
Murushi Juko has put in his pocket Marega, but now we are watching <laughs> Marega in, in FC Porto playing yeah. against Liverpool and in champ UEFA Champions League, yeah. and our Murushi is enjoying uh, bongo <laughs> flavor in the <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, about, finally, uh, about group, group F, where we have Cameroon, Ghana, Benin, and Guinea Bissau. That's the final group I think we have. Uh, defending champions with uh, Seedorf and Kluivert mm. at helm. Uh, and Ghana always going on the tournament, even before the tournament starts, they, they have already won, <laughs> verbally. But when they reach there, things are not the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, you look at Benin with coach Michel Dussier, if you remember, mm -hmm. he, he was coaching Guinea when we played. He has returned back to the scene of crime because he was coach that took them to 2010 mm -hmm. to Angola and once more back and a competitive group with Guinea-Bissau that has all the players playing in Europe and have a very enthusiastic federation that really provide them a platform uh, to play. Uh, very competitive group also and we shall have a thrilling Africa Cup of Nations. But an invisible match that we are not seeing has already started moment when the draw has been done. Okay. How you prepare? Uh, this is Matters. all about now. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe coach, coach mentioned something about the group for South Africa, and uh, you know, yeah, uh, that's group B. Morocco, yeah, group yeah, that's three South teams Canada. will qualify. Yeah. Perhaps point of information for the viewers. Okay. Uh, of the six groups, uh, the top two qualify Only automatically, the and then the the, the best four. four. From the rest, three. that makes so the, the best team. number threes. The best number threes, yes. Okay, so that's why perhaps you said three yes, could go yeah. from the group. Yeah. Uh, Robert, your final question. Uh, I don't have much. Uh, uh, very interesting. What, what, what uh, hearing from Mitchell taking us through yeah. those groups yeah. and all. But uh, I, I guess you know, before we leave the cranes, uh, I would ask Mitchell, uh, how different is, is, is the cranes currently from from uh, the what cranes that, that that you last handled? I know Andrew Cabrera asked you that question. Uh, and I know you came uh, under a immense pressure, pressure and stick from people for fielding uh, Geoffrey Massa. People are saying he's on his last legs. Why are you taking uh, this, 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 this uh, washed up striker? Uh, but, mm. you know, the Cranes has, has, has lost some of that experience. I know you, you've quite rightly yes. pointed out uh, the experienced players who are there. But if, if uh, Farouk Mia is one of your experienced players and is just... Um, at, at, uh, the, at the right end of his 20s, it shows you that because experience also tends to be weighed in terms of age, at least footballing ways. What do you think of the Cranes? Is it a nice blend of uh, youth and experience? We're having Moses Weisswas, we're having uh, Patrick Kadu, we're having uh, the likes of, um, of I don't know who they are, there are these Johnny Cam lately who are coming through. What do you make of uh, the Cranes? Uh, first of all, I need to tell you uh, that it's totally different being coach and carrying the dreams of millions of Ugandans on your shoulders. They, when I went from here, believe me, same like one big heavy stone went away from my shoulders. <laughs> uh, from distance now, as a supporter, you always want the best. And in a way, uh, uh, as a coach, I need to be extremely realistic. Uh, and giving an absolute respect coach Sebastian to his technical team uh, for whatever they have done they have continued something and even improved qualifying before the last match uh, and I salute that and me myself going now into touching something could be counted as a uh, you know, Sabutua. Uh, I will tell you. I will tell you properly. I will tell you. When you are, uh, when someone is with a team, is same like being in marriage. Mm. Uh. Now, uh, Coach Sebastian is married with Uganda Cranes, and this is his family. This is his part of job. Mm. Me coming and talking about the individuals is unfair. Mm. I believe in him. I believe in players. Mm. And I have no doubt that the best possible solution will come for the upcoming Africa Cup of Nations. Okay, okay. Coach, before we go for a break, someone has uh, brought in a question that I thought I should uh, 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 give it to you. It's called Kungu Almadi Adam, and he asks two questions for Mitchell Coach. Uh, one, apart from Onyango and Obua, why are Ugandan players failing 
to properly fit in the ABSA Premiership. And uh, number two, he asks, I expected him to pull a number of players to the ABSA Premiership, given his long time here, but uh, he did not. Are we just incapable as players? He asks. Uh, look, uh, if I'm opening why I didn't pull from here someone, uh, then I will open the can of worms <laughs> and I, someone would take it personally because uh, some people that are leading the football here, they know very well uh, contributions from the point of the players uh, that are presently playing that wherever I can say as ambassador of Ugandan football and coming uh, uh, here down in at Villa Park was my football birthplace and I don't forget this but certain things simply uh, you can bring the horse to water but uh, if a horse that does not want to drink then you are having <laughs> problems. Uh, Denis Onyango is lasting and this is uh, supposed to be a role model and positive example to others. Uh, Massa was a few years there. We are having at present Marty Kiza doing well in Free State Stars and especially Alan Caterega that many people are uh, asking now after last time scoring those two goals. Um, David Obua put proper seeds as a first player that has established himself in Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, his meaning is very hard to speak. Uganda has everything what it takes. But when you are reaching there, everyone needs to know that it's not easy to be foreigner nowhere. Yes. Here, they are our boys and we always say our players, our players, and we shall always look to look them as ours. There, you perform, you are there. You don't perform, yeah, hit the road. Yeah. I regret that, for example, uh, Walusimbi did not yeah. continue because they wanted to send him, but it was not easy where he was because there are so many other things involved. He has quality for Kaiser Chiefs, but they wanted goalkeeper and they wanted to make the swap deal. Unfortunately, he need, didn't stay there. Uh, it's not easy to be foreigner. And I wish that uh, Uganda is a magic country from the point of national team and the players. Ugandan players have something what rarely players on this continent have. They, played, they play much better for the national team than the for their club. respective teams, except certain individuals that yeah. we know. <laughs> Quite something. All right, fantastic. Coach, uh, we shall just continue this conversation a bit after the break. Yeah. And of course, we shall also talk uh, European football and uh, the English Premier League, in fact, and the UEFA Champions League as well. And a little bit about life at Orlando Pirates. He will tell us that when we come back after this break. Thank you. All right, we're back uh, with a gentleman, of course, our uh, special, special guest, uh, Coach Micho, who's, uh, who came all the way from South Africa. Coach, I must continue to say this is a pleasure to have you on the show tonight. We've loved uh, your analysis on everything and uh, more so on African football. Before we move on to the uh, English Premier League, I wanted to ask about life in South Africa. You know, when you sign for Orlando Pirates, Every, the, you know, Twitter, Facebook, social media was a buzz. They, they, I think they gave you a, a car, a convertible BMW or Mercedes or something. They gave, life looked good and I think... Yeah, he, yeah. I, I actually tested everything when, when, <laughs> when I was in South Africa. I, I even went to his, uh, I, I don't know how to call it, beautiful place. Yeah, kind of Beverly, yeah, yeah, Beverly Hills of South Africa. Beverly Hills of South Africa. He has everything, including... Uh, I think he has uh, a small ring for basketball, uh, swimming pool. Uh, he was struggling to fill the house, so <laughs> the time I was there, I tried to help him. <laughs> oh, he bought like me a shirt as well at Orlando Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, at the club shop. And, and, and we went to a casino with Dennis Onyango and yeah. he paid for the dinner. Gosh, I'm coming back to South Africa in June. <laughs> so, and, and this is the jersey that you use uh, when you're in the gym? Uh, no, I, that's Barcelona. Barcelona <laughs> is the Orlando Pirates jersey. Anyhow, uh, it is a huge switch. First of all, uh, you need to know that. Uh, since 1937, that badge and jersey is a holy jersey yeah. of South African, South African football to the struggle against apartheid. And even today, when you see the set of our supporters, who are they, from where they are coming, and whatever, and who are supporters of other teams, you could see that ours are coming really uh, from all spheres of life and uh, making them proud and happy 
because in two years prior to me coming there, they have lost 20 league matches. And for a big team, uh, this is an unacceptable, losing 6-1, 6-0, 4-1 and such a things. So they have been a punching bag and they have been a joking uh, object and laughing stock there. And uh, it was not easy to turn that. However, I need <coughs> to give the credit to the chairman, Dr. Ivan Kozla, that has brought me there. I have been lucky to surround myself with the right people around myself, with the most talented uh, South African coach, Lani Mokwena. Yeah. It has, has come and uh, uh, it is my duty as a foreign coach to groom the future of their football. And uh, we started we are not clubs, same like Memory Sundowns, that we are going with enormous investments. <coughs> we just wanted to prove that power of coaching could make up for lack of huge investments. And we went step by step last year after six years returning club to the Cup Champions League. This year being in contention, leading now the table, but still everything is in legs and hands of Memory Sundowns that are three matches behind. It will be a tough uh, competition until end, but we believe that uh, after seven years we could return the happiness uh, to Orlando Stadium. Uh, why I'm uh, uh, excited regarding that? Excited from the point that uh, kind of people that on the streets, kind of people in all spheres of life that we are meeting, that I'm meeting daily, and seeing what it means to them. You know, this is an injection that pushes you to sleepless nights, to hard-working mm -hmm. days, in order to fulfill the biggest power as football people we are having. Power of making people happy is the biggest power. And my, our supporters are called happy people, and we are really trying our the best to make them once more happy people after several years of uh, being behind and, and, and being like punching bag. Let me just ask you one question before I move to the EPL. Um, <clears throat> I read an article and you quoted, you said, uh, every match you're taking, you have three ties left, every match you're taking is just, you know, it's step by step, but your main objective is continental football for next season. Absolutely. Uh, this is minimum and maximum, whatever it comes. Uh, we want to be uh, back into the Champions League. We had this year a very nice return with only two players having experience of playing continental football. Now, with 10 matches, mm -hmm. uh, we have really gained an experience that now need to be complemented, qualify once more and once more go to Africa, mm -hmm. because we want to put a primary target is mm -hmm. uh, our chairman has brought mm -hmm. the World Cup to the South Africa. Our chairman has, <laughs> as a PSL chairman, has done everything in football. The only competition he has still not been is Club World Cup. Mm. So we want a second star, we want to go to the Club World Cup and road is very simple. We need to qualify once more to the Cup Champions League. Okay. Fantastic coach. Uh, let's switch gears because uh, Sean is telling me I have... Coach five, won't forgive you if he doesn't minutes, talk Tiger Woods. Five minutes. I'll, I'll let him wrap up with uh, 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 <laughs> some, some strong okay. words of, about that Tiger Woods show but yesterday. Maybe just briefly can uh, talk us through the Champions League. We have Onyango yeah, well. there, yeah. Kipi Mazembe. And, we're, and we're, yeah, and yeah, we're going yeah. to do that. Let me just talk EPL and get it out of the way. Mm. Uh, we're seeing the kind of fight that is there between number one and number yes. two. And then there's another bigger fight for the top four, that one. which is even much closer. <laughs> uh, as I speak, Arsenal are currently leading Watford 1-0, 64th minute. Uh, Troy Dini was red carded early in the game. So Pierre Omerik Aubameyang with that goal in the 11th minute. But coach, um, Liverpool City, someone will blink somewhere. It is a two-horse race. It is a race that really takes a lot. When you see, uh, prior to the New Year, advantage that Liverpool had, and then uh, how that advantage at once goes, because you need to keep the highest level of concentration and focus, uh, and uh, at once advantage is not anymore there. Now it is an uh, eye for an eye fight <laughs> and when you look at the uh, last uh, hurdle that City could fall is uh, Manchester. From number three onwards down to number six, I have Tottenham, Chelsea, Man United and Arsenal are all separated by four points. Of course, Chelsea has a game in uh, has played a game more than both United and Tottenham. Arsenal are playing their 33rd game right now. 
how do you see this shaping up? Because it gets to that point, it's very hard for any of these teams. They know the European uh, participating in Europe is, is, is paramount. You, Absolutely. You don't want to drop points. Uh, uh, not, uh, uh, competing in uh, uh, UEFA Champions League is a standard uh, that brings so much to the clubs. Mm -hmm and give, give an age of bringing new players that they want to play uh, as a precondition to play in UEFA Champions League. And it will go up to wire uh, when you look all four uh, teams with their respective coaches have chance, credit to uh, OGS uh, for yeah. uh, bringing in competition when yeah. once it was thought that they will never come close. Uh, Pochettino is for me unsung hero, not buying anyone but with team that he has, but still in the season he had slight dip that make him now in this. Uh, Sari with the style of play uh, that is a dream of uh, Roman Abramovich, but in the same moment uh, style of play uh, you can have but without results. I know how this is touchy for you and whatever. Uh, you, you cannot get both. You cannot get both. And then you have Arsenal with a coach that has won many Europa leagues, uh, coming for, from PSG, um, Unai Emery, uh, bringing win another a, game. A, a, and it's not easy to jump into the boots of Arsene Wenger over 20 After years that. there. Uh, significant improvement, but still instability and lack of consistency brought them in this position that it is four horse race for two places in uh, UEFA Champions League. Uh, Sean, we have a picture of the graphic of uh, the Champions League. I think mm -hmm. it should be coming up now. Mm -hmm. I just wanted uh, Coach Mitchell to give us his pick uh, mm -hmm. about, uh, yeah, there should be, I think, mm -hmm. Barcelona and United. The return leg there is Juventus and Ajax. Juventus at home, of course. A uh, couple of a couple of ties there, mm -hmm. Coach. When you look at this table and this graphic, yes. What? Where do you see? I don't want to talk about Manchester United first mm -hmm. because these people will kill me here because yeah. I have my rights. But we go with Juventus. <laughs> we go. Yeah. <laughs> where do, uh, what? What? Okay. Two final teams do you see making at, it to that at, final from there? Uh, you know. Um, <laughs> it's very hard to think, but uh, simply they they are they are favourites there. Their favorites there, and um, uh, in my personal opinion, having in, uh, having that competitive edge of bringing Cristiano Ronaldo missing puzzle in mosaic of Juventus with uh, uh, Max Allegri uh, will be one team, and then uh, it is very hard to to, <laughs> to see uh, experience of Liverpool that has an edge over Porto. Uh, I'm convinced that Manchester United will not give up in, in Barcelona we, uh, and, and Barcelona oh. need to be served with warning what happened last time uh, in PSG. Parc de Prince in, 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 in Paris against PSG. Uh, There's an interesting one there, Manchester City and Tottenham. Uh, very interesting uh, and, and when you look at uh, Manchester City need to come out and uh, competitiveness is, is a totally different ball game when you look them uh, look at them at yeah. UEFA Champions mm. League and yeah. play at home. You know, it's like it's looking it's look like like different ball game in a way. Too much at stake, and the way uh, Pochettino uh, set his team last time was exactly how you can uh, punish from the half space when uh, where uh, uh, co Korean. Uh, Sorry soon uh, waited for the ball was exactly and now that they, they need to risk and come out and when you come out you expose the space behind you ask yourself anything is possible so still everything open no nobody has not maybe uh, Liverpool has the strongest fit in the yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 into the yeah, same final okay uh, I'll give uh, I'll, Andrew I'll give you 10 seconds and Madoi 10 to ask your final questions mm. and maybe coach can answer it in one minute because mm. I'm being told we're yeah my, my, my question definitely has to go back to the coach's roots mm. uh, yeah. coach you come from Serbia a country known for never giving up uh, we always chat when Djokovic is in action and you're telling me uh, you never die I mean you have to fight all the way to the end coming from such a background 
how much does the Tiger Woods victory, given what he's been through over the years, how much of that does it come get to you? So much. Uh, I need to tell you that this is what happened, and we have seen since 2008 what happened yeah, yeah. in comparison. Uh, it is so many years behind, and you see how he has touched the rock bottom, and uh, to use the rock bottom to bounce back and to reach where he has reached with this, and I wish him to continue, to not be just an accidental step back. And you could see the similar story uh, with Novak Djokovic when he had that injury of uh, uh, his elbow. Uh, bouncing back uh, and uh, he was having different mental coach and uh, whatever and stre inner strength that uh, Novak Djokovic in his own way but especially Tiger Woods that has been a rock of all bottoms yes. uh, bouncing back it is a really sport miracle for me and an inspiration and if someone tells me in matches that we are having ahead uh, always when players are coming from the warm-up we are editing and preparing an example whether last time we had all blacks as that last injection of motivation before coming to play for the jersey i think tiger woods will be have the main role as an inspiration and showing what sport hurt and and mad desire to bounce back could do and i really salute him he's really an inspiration for all of us being involved in sport Robert, one final question. Yes, mine uh, is, is uh, for the coach to give us a flavor of, uh, of uh, the CAF Champions League. We've been talking about the UEFA Champions League, but also the CAF Champions League has uh, entered its business end. Earlier, you were talking about uh, the inadequacies of, of, uh, of the people who are in the Cranes group. You talked about the Egyptians, you know, not being flexible in the West, the defenders and all that. I'm sure you must have seen Emo Kui, that opening goal that, that he scored um, against uh, Tipi Against Tipi Yes. I think it brings out uh, that aspect because you talked about the Congolese also being weak in that aspect. So we saw that, obviously, uh, Simba went on to lose that match com quite, you know, uh, comprehensively. Then also we had uh, Onyango uh, acquitting himself, although he, he considered one goal, he pulled off, you know, a string of saves. Just walk us through the CAF Champions League from the Ugandan perspective. Uh, CAF Champions League is in a transitional year. Transitional year because the first time is lasting this short period ending now in end of May. Uh, and it was not easy competing at home and competing uh, away. Simba, as a, a team that has reached the quarterfinals, has been surprise package. But surprise package due to one very important fact. And that fact is home crowd and the Salaam National Stadium. Now, going away, they, they have been very poor travelers. They considered three against Ankana. They considered two in Saura in Algeria. They considered five in, in Cairo against Akli. They considered five against Aeswita and now four. Is meaning this is something what they need to go into the deep analysis. What is wrong when they are going away? They are totally different people. Because uh, I remember we had with Cranes and similar issue uh, uh, of being home team that wins everything at home. Then away we are, we are at home. Lions away we are cats. <laughs> uh, so Simba need to go through that aspect, uh, reanalyze and bounce back next year strongly, as a flag bearer of East African football. Now, um, Emma Oakley scoring there is good confidence for the Uganda Cranes. But you know, against the run of play, second minute scoring. And not lasting to the last minute, and Rushi Juko being substituted there uh, is you are having good Emma scoring and bad in an analysis. Good is that I'm very happy I, because I know what role I played that uh, Ochaya went to Tipi Mazembe, that he's there and uh, him going to the next round to the semi final seeds and very good step. Semi-final round with Denis Onyango um, in quarterfinals having a miraculous match. First, they have been uh, always second best against us on Monday when we played and we have been unlucky to not beat them. In both matches, we outplayed them, but unlucky to not beat them. It served them as a warning and then they bounced back five days after and they beat Achli, the highest defeat of Achli in their history since 1942, 77 years. 
when Zamalek beat them that time during the Second World War. Now, um, beating them, and it was a shocking experience, but it has shown that uh, at least beatable. Going away there, it was so much pressure, changing the ground, going to Suez, going back to uh, Borgel Arabi in Alexandria. Uh, Onyango has simply shown that he is the main pillar of Mamelodi Sundowns. You can have your flair, flavor uh, up front, you can have your players in the middle field uh, uh, protecting, but Denis Onyango is that main pillar, and this I'm telling you from the source of coach himself because coach has been involved 2006 when he was with St. George with me. Uh, Pizzo Mosimane took him to Supersport after his just life story of Denis Onyango. Yes. I wish him to continue. Uh, they are clashing against Vidat Casablanca. That is a uh, fair tale story. 2017 they clash with them in quarterfinals. They won on penalties with that. 2018 they have been in the same group. Uh, Mamelo de Sandals dropped from the group. Now uh, they have been in the same group. They are clashing once more. Is uh, Mamelo de Sandals? They know how to travel to Casablanca. Their coach every week is going for the lessons because he's going for profit license. Then they are traveling there, and it's known territory, an unpredictable match. Uh, uh, but good is that Mamelo de Sandals plays first match away against very hostile crowd at uh, Mohammed Fifth Stadium. <coughs> And they have second match in Pretoria. And then you have uh, Tipi Mazembe and Esperance, who are defending champions against Tipi Mazembe, that last year failed uh, in quarterfinals. Now uh, they are bouncing back uh, with an experience, um, same like Wine, Putumabi, and the boys uh, representing uh, Black Africa in the best possible way. And I believe that will uh, outscore at least. Uh, Esperance because they are playing first match away and second at home in, M in Mombashi. Fantastic. Uh, I, I think it's just safe to say it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, Coach. I know you have a fixture with Maritzburg, Cape Town, and uh, Polokwane City coming up. We do wish you the best of success. I'm talking for all these guys when I say we follow, we follow you up whenever you're there. We're happy to see you successful at Orlando Pirates. It's always a pleasure. Please come back and uh, eat some more. Molokoni and, and Vinyevoa and uh, Wombo. Thank you very much. I would just say uh, and present and share with you and your viewers something what happened to me and special feeling. After almost two years, I have landed in, in Etebe and I had that feeling uh, that I have only, I have been 138 countries uh, all over the world. I have been 50 out of 54 African countries. But feeling that I have coming to Serbia where I need, after coming from the plane to kiss uh, soil, I did today at Entebbe because I feel Uganda is my second home and I want to thank you. I count myself as ambassador of all of you because I grew up with you, with Ugandan coaches, Ugandan administrators, Ugandan media. Thank you very much for everything. If it was not you, I would not be myself. And I will keep up representing myself and you in the best possible way. Oh, thank, thank you, Coach. Thank you very much, Coach. Um, sadly, that's all we could have uh, for you this week. We'll be back again next week. Many thanks, Andrew. Many thanks uh, uh, to Robert Madoy, of course. Thank you very much, Coach Mitchell. Of course, again, Max Sally, who uh, is somewhere behind that side. Uh, Andrew and uh, Asha Komugisha are still in Tanzania. They'll be giving us a report next week, so we'll be getting in touch with them. But for 